Hey guys, what's up? It's Andy Fogarty here from theathomewelder.com and I'm here for kingmetals.com. And over the next few episodes, we're going to be building a very cool custom gate design that we got directly from the King Metals Design Concepts catalog. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so here is the gate that we're going to be using. Now, I love using these Design Concepts catalogs because they're completely free and they literally have hundreds and hundreds of pages of just different stuff for you to build. Now the cool thing is, is they give you all the measurements that you need. I love this because it gives you all the item numbers and everything uh, so you could just kind of go online and order everything that you need. Most of the sizes that they're going to give you in these catalogs are just standard sizes. So these are sizes that you're going to be using probably all the time, in, especially in newer construction. The first thing you really need to do before you build something like a gate is you need to have your frame. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with putting together our frame. But what I wanted to do is, is show you how you can make sure that your frame is going to be square. Now this is a question that we get a lot, uh, especially with people who are kind of new to building projects, is how do I get something that's square? Now there's a couple different ways to do that. Now obviously the easiest way for you to do that is to be able to have a, a good table set up where you can have jigs and, and, and pieces clamped down to, to your table to give you right angles. Now that's the easiest way to get something square. But what happens if you don't have that? So what do you do to build something that's square? Well, here's a couple different ways to do this. So one of my favorite ways to build uh, large projects, large gates or frames, anything that's going to be large and square or rectangle is to break it up into sections. So I'm going to take my two pieces of material and I'm just going to butt them up here just like this and I'm just going to tack this up. Now I'm not going to weld this all together and the reason being is because this is a larger project. If you, if you can't clamp everything all the way towards the end of your table, I suggest just tacking it because it's possible that the heat from welding could pull your angle in just a little bit. So if you can't clamp everything down, make it good and secure, just do some good tack welds and then we'll come back and finish it up later. All right, now that I've welded this side together, I'm gonna do the same thing with my other two pieces of material and go ahead and weld up my other corner. Okay, now that I have uh, both of my uh, sides welded together, the, my right angles together, I'm going to just basically put them together like a puzzle piece. I'm just gonna put one on the other side and we'll make sure that everything is nice and square and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be right on the money and then we will weld everything up. All right, so that first method was a great way to do large scale projects and honestly, it's pretty much how I do all of my large projects. Second way I wanna show you is what happens if you don't have any clamps or anything like that to work with? I know, I know sacrilege trying to build a project without clamps, but it does happen. And I know that most of you out there probably aren't in that situation, but what happens if you are? You need to know how to build something that's square if you don't have, if you're in the worst case scenario. So that's what I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, so I've got uh, my frame laid out. I've got my little rectangle here. Now, the important thing to remember is to make sure that you have all your corners laid out the same way. Uh, and what I mean by that is if you, if you don't have your corners uh, mitered, so if you don't have a 45 degree angle, if you just have it cut straight, you just wanna make sure that everything is the same. So I'm gonna make sure that this piece is on the outside of my two smaller pieces. What we're going to do is we are simply going to take our tape measure and we're going to measure from corner to corner and that is how we're going to get this square. Basically what we want is the same measurement on each corner and that's when we're going to know that it is square. Now this is kind of a pain in the butt especially when you're using a uh, smaller material like this that doesn't weigh that much because it is easy for it to move around. It can take a little while to get right but if it's, it's all you have to work with this is what you have to do. All right, now that everything is in place, what I do is I very gently tack this frame together. And I say very gently because it's not clamped together. It's very easy for this to move. So I'll just kind of push down and squeeze just a little bit with my fingers. And then I will run one quick tack on the inside. Now the reason that I tack this on the inside is because if I were to tack this on the outside, I wouldn't be able to shift this if 
something happened and it got a little off while tacking it together. By me tacking this on the inside corner, it still allows me to kind of shift the square just a little bit if things get off. All right, my next step now that I've got this tack is I'm gonna go ahead and pull my measurements once again and check all my corners and do the same thing until I've gone all the way around. And now you have your nice square frame to work with. Now, again, this would be a lot easier if you just had a, a great table with clamps and everything, but what I gave you today was some great options on if you don't have the perfect scenario to work with. All right, so the next part is we're going to start filling in the guts of this gate. Now, we're not just gonna start putting it all in there and just start welding it together because that's when we're gonna weld ourselves into a bad situation. That can happen a lot of times. And the only way you're gonna be able to fix it is to actually go in and do some major grinder surgery, which is not only just messy and a pain in the butt, but can also damage uh, the castings that you ordered, which you don't wanna do. But we're gonna cover all that in the next video of this series, so make sure you check that out. So I'm Andy Fogarty for the atomewalter.com and for kingmetals.com, and I will see you again in the next video when we start putting the guts in this gate. <laughs>